Hello everyone, it's been a while but today I'm finally doing the review of the Fistech Spider board. This board was developed by Fistech in collaboration with the Voron development team. Fistech sent me a sample back in May and I've been using it on my Voron 2.4 since then. I made an overview video of this back then and I went over the connectors and the features of the board but I waited until now to make the review to make sure I tested everything and now it is time. So let's start with the box as usual. The spider board ships inside a large box, relatively speaking, with great artwork on it. Inside the box there is a USB-C cable, drivers or whatever extra you ordered and the board itself in an antiseptic bag. The board has a micro SD card slot, but no micro SD card is included, so make sure you already have one. There are two MCU options, the 446 and the 407, and both are functionally the same. Only reason this is the case is because of the global component shortage, and as I said, for this application, both MCUs are basically the same. The board supports Marlin, Clipper, and even RepRap firmware with apparently reduced features, but uh, my testing was done with Clipper. The board is a gorgeous looking matte black board with nice artwork on the backside along with the Warren logo and 5stack logos because they collaborated, pinouts and an ugly QC sticker that I immediately removed. On top of the obvious features this board also features 12V and 5V buck converters so you don't need a 5V power supply for your Raspberry Pi or a 12V power supply for LEDs, fans etc. You can also supply the 5V rail from the USB port with a jumper like uh, plenty of other boards if you wish but you'd be not using one of the nicest features of this board that way. The board features 8 step 6 slots so this is an ideal board for the Voron 2 which requires 7. It could also be useful for tool changer setups on other printers too. One edge case with the Voron 2 where 8 drivers isn't enough is if you want an average rapid project card feeder or any other MMU2 unit. You'd need 9 drivers but otherwise 8 is more than enough and you even have a spare so if you want a PT100 stick or something else you can use that slot for that. All slots support SPI and UART for TMC sensor compatibility and sensorless homing is an option that is available too and there are jumpers for this so you don't have to cut pins like you have to do on the SKR 1.4. The pinouts of the 5-stack and the big 3-tech drivers are the same, so you can use the big 3-tech TMC drivers that you might have laying around with the 5-stack port if you wish. There are 4 MOSFETs for heaters on this board, 3 for hot hands and 1 for the bed. The bed one has a separate power input, so you can use a different voltage for the bed if you wish. This is not for AC beds or anything like that, but just in case you want a higher voltage DC bed. The rest of the heaters and the motors are connected to the main power input, so no 48 volt steppers. Both the main input and the bed input are fused and the only non-ceramic cap on the board is near the power input and it is a cheap one but it should still work fine and I haven't heard about any problems with that and mine is fine as well. There are 4 thermistor inputs, 1 for the bed plus 3 for heaters. The thermistor inputs have a high accuracy pull-up resistor so it is possible to use PT1000 sensors for better readings. There is some misinformation out there about PT100 support as a result of an error in a wiring diagram but PT100 sensors are not supported, only PT1000 and regular thermistors are supported. If you wish to use a PT100, you can use the extra step 6 slot for a PT100 stick, a max 31A65 sensor wire somewhere else, or an E3D style amp by cutting the trays below the thermistor input and wiring it like a regular thermistor. The board has 3 fan connectors with individual voltage selection jumpers so you can use 12V, 24V or 5V fans. There are also some RGB LED connectors with a voltage selection jumper and you can connect fans to them if you need more fans. There is also a 5V RGB header if you want to use that style of RGB. There are 6 limit switch connectors and there are voltage selecting pads on the back if you don't want to use 3.3V with them. There is also a shot key diode built into one of the limit switch connectors so you don't need to use a BAT85 diode for your probe. If you already have a BAT85 diode in your wiring, this won't hurt anything, but it is nice so you don't need to add that if you don't want to, if you don't have it already in your wiring. There is also a probe voltage selector jumper available as well so you are not stuck with 24 volts for your probe, you can also use 5 volts. The connectivity to the Raspberry Pi can be through the USB-C connector or the UART header but we'll get to the UART header in a bit. The USB-C connector also has the footprint of a full-size USB-B on my board as an option, but the newer revisions of the board will have the footprint of a USB-A connector. There is also an XH connector behind the USB connector, so if you don't want to use a USB cable for USB connectivity, you can use that XH header. Next to them there is the microSD card slot and the extender pin so you can use a chassis mounted microSD card slot if you want. There is also a CAN bus header on the board but you can't connect a CAN bus directly there, you'll still need more circuitry. 
So now for the UART, the pins labeled UART and PI are connection pins for powering your Raspberry Pi using the internal 5V supply and for serial connection to the Raspberry Pi so you don't have to use a USB connector, instead you can use UART. I initially couldn't make the UART connection work, but I managed to make it work later. The problem was the wires. Definitely make sure to use thick ones. This is also important if you don't want voltage drops on the 5V wires. And before anyone says, it is perfectly fine to power Raspberry Pi through the 5V GPIO pins. There used to be a protection built into the Raspberry Pi 3, but the Raspberry Pi 4 doesn't have it anymore, and it even worked fine on Raspberry Pi 3. You just ended up bypassing that protection, and well, it wasn't that bad, so that's why they removed it. It's not a big deal, so, so definitely you can power your Raspberry Pi through that. It's not a problem. My experience with this board was positive, but I think it is worth mentioning some pictures I saw on the Voron Discord. There are some cases of bad soldering jobs, but nothing important. They won't cause any problems, but they just look ugly. There are also some weird problems with the Expansion 1 and Expansion 2 connected displays. Because of the pinout change on the spider board, do not press the reset button on a connected Mini 12864 display, or you will burn traces. This is a big problem with this connector, and it shouldn't have passed QC if you ask me, but you can remove a register to prevent this from happening if you don't trust yourself to not hit that button. Also, a display can cause firmware uploading problems, and the solution is to disconnect it or to remove a resistor. So, again, another weirdness with this connector, but um, yeah, definitely pay attention if you want to connect displays, but uh, if you take the precautions, shouldn't be a problem. The board is open source and the source is available on GitHub. Wiring diagrams, pinouts and other useful information is available there as well. Since the initial release, FiveSec did a new revision of this board, the version 1.1. And with 1.1 they added a BL Touch connector, changed the footprint of the mentioned USB connector and some silk screen changes. So nothing major, but it's still an improvement. So overall I really like this board, but before ending the review I should mention some negatives. The biggest one in my opinion is the display weirdness I mentioned. I mean, it, you can burn traces, it is that bad, but uh, yeah, definitely pay attention if you want to connect displays. I'd also like to see a proper CAN bus header and an extra step stick connector so Enrichabit Project Care Feeder is supported. It would also be nice to have a Max31865 based PT100 header on the board, but I get why this wasn't included, it's just too expensive. I'd also like to see a thicker cardboard box for this so that the box doesn't get damaged while shipping. And lastly, it would be nice to see a separate power supply input for the steppers too so you can use 48 volt steppers. But I think these negatives, with the exception of the display stuff I mentioned, are fairly minor complaints. I'd like a better solution for the display for sure though, but still, this is a great board considering all of its features. The built-in bug converters are great and the Pi header is a big bonus too. I also like the minor features like the built-in diode for the probe. The Voron design team's influence really shows here. And uh, one more thing worth mentioning is there used to be a pre-order queue and you had to wait weeks for shipping, but this is no longer the case. So if you order the sport, it should be shipped fairly quickly. So if you like what you hear, there are purchase links in the description below. To be 100% transparent, I'll repeat that this board was sent to me for free by Fivesec, but no money was involved and all of what I said are my opinions. But uh, that's it for this review, so I hope you found this review useful. If you did, please give me a like down below and thanks for watching.